So what's going on guys, KDS here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best Monkey King build in Black Meat Wukong. So I've reached level 90 and throughout my playthrough and fighting different bosses, I've now figured out the most optimized equipment, what are the best spirits, what are really good relics, what stances should we focus on upgrading early on and much more. Our build's main focus is to stack as much critical hit chance and damage increase as possible while also having really good defense, so we would survive very hard enemy hits. By using the best of the best gear sets, weapons and perks, this setup will carry us through every single hard boss fight. So if this sounds interesting to you, then let's get right into it. So then let's start off with the equipment, and the way I found it to work the best for me is just to use whatever best item you got until level 50 because after that milestone you will start getting access to more powerful items and set pieces that if you have 2 or 4 same gear sets they will give you extra bonuses and this will be very important in the mid to late game because with each level the enemies will get harder and harder so for us not to die hundreds of times we want to maximize our damage and survivability and this is where our equipment comes into play so first of all for the mask we want to use the bull king's mask this will grant us moderate focus upon taking damage, and if the destined one is staggered, then we will get even more focus on top of everything else. Then for armor, we get the Monkey King's chest piece. Then for bracers, the Bull King's bracers. And lastly for boots, we use the Bull King's greaves. Among all the options in the game, the best armor set by far is the Monkey King set, but it can only be obtained during the chapter 6 after you defeat the four great beasts in the foothills area. And that's why for this build, you will see me mixing two best sets, so the Monkey King set and the Bulls King Armor set. Both of them are the best of the best, but usually players start in the mid game acquiring the Bulls King set, and then only in the late game the King's Monkey set. Our end game goal is to get the full Monkey King set, because this armor set offers high defense and a variety of stat boosts as well as synergies for spellcasting and critical hit chance. On top of that, the set bonuses are for 3 and 5 equipped pieces of gear. This is because the Jingu Bang, the mythical weapon, is considered to be the part of the full set as well. But in meantime, before we get our full endgame godlike build, we use the mid-game god build, which is the Bull's King Armor. And this is primarily due to the extremely high defensive stats, including the set bonuses, that boost this attribute even further. If you want to know what it feels like for the enemy hits to tickle you, instead of doing real damage, then these gear pieces are the right pick for you. And if you want to get this equipment, then you need to complete chapter 5, secret area objective, and this will help you to acquire the necessary crafting materials. Then next up we have the weapon, and we are right now using the best alternative, the Golden Long Staff. This item can be crafted as an upgrade to the Long Redden Staff after defeating the Scion Long, which is an unoptional boss on the Turtle Island in Chapter 3. This weapon will increase the damage dealt by a pillar stance moves, and it can be summoned to execute the thunder at the enemy's feet. Overall this is a quite easy weapon to get, which is very powerful and with great damage. And as I said, we will use this weapon until we get the mythical weapon, called the Jingu Bang which unlike the other weapons, will count as the 5th piece, and give us extremely good set bonuses. Then next we have the vessel, and we are going to use the Wind Tamer. This is the best vessel in the game, because once you activate it, it will massively increase our damage reduction for a short duration, and give us immunity to strong winds. This is very effective against specific hard bosses. Then afterwards we have the spirit, and the best spirit for fighting bosses is the Bandering White because it does massive damage in front of the target, and make sure to use it when you really need more burst damage against the enemy. And then last but not the least we have the Curios, and the more you progress through the game, the more slots and Curios you will obtain, and the top 3 best ones are the Matrix Orb, Gold Spike Plate and the Cat Eyes Beads. The Matrix Orb allows you to avoid Fatal Blow, if you land enough hits on the enemy. Then the Gold Spike Plate increases our defense considerably, and deals damage to surrounding enemies upon taking a hit. And then the cat eye beads will increase our overall critical hit chance. Then now let's move over to the relics. And the best relic that I recommend to use is the craving eyes with the keen inside passive. This will give us a massive increase to our critical hit damage. 
and as we want to stack as much damage as possible, so this is very important to select. Then as far as foundations go, the higher level you will be, the more things you will have to upgrade and max out. Personally, what you can see is the way I have upgraded it, and you should use this exact setup as well, but in order you do this doesn't really matter as much as in other games. So what I recommend to do is just start with the martial arts, then move over to the stamina, and finish off with upgrading the survival tree. What at least I did was first of all unlocking the perks, and then when I unlocked everything I needed, only then I started to upgrade the perks to the higher tiers. Next up we have the staff stances, and this time the order you unlock things will matter a lot, especially if you are still in the early game. So the best stance by far is the smash stance, so we want to unlock all of these, and only then when we have unlocked everything we needed, only then we go to the pillar stance and unlock the rest of the perks. Smash stance gives us damage, and then the pillar stance gives us more defenses. In early game, the bosses are not that difficult, so if we first of all upgrade our damage, then we will be able to speedrun through the game much quicker. Then afterwards we have the mysticism, and here we simply want to get the whole immobilized tree. The immobilize is the best and most useful spell by far, because we will use it a lot to stun and immobilize the enemy, so then we can do free easy damage. This is the best and one of the most optimal ways to increase the duration and damage while stunned. So what I usually do is control the boss by using the immobilize, and then I save mana for emergency stun after the cooldown is refreshed. Then next up we have the alteration, and here this time we don't want to select anything. By progressing through the game we get sparks, which are very valuable, and that's why we need to use them very effectively. And even at level 90, there are still better places to spend them than right here. Then as far as force chance, we fully want to spec into the A Pluck of Many spell. This will give us the ability to create a bunch of monkey clones, that will help us to escape or do even more damage on top of everything else. Then for one of the last parts of our build we have the transformation, and this is more of a personal preference. What usually the best case to do is change the transformation that you use, depending on what type of boss you are fighting. I really like the moon roam and the riot tides, or burn damage or damage increase after a perfect dodge. With both of these options you can't go wrong, but if you truly want to get the maximum percentage out of your build, switching this between each boss fight is a tactic that you can do as well. And then for the last and final part we have come to the gameplay. So the best way to beat enemies in Black Meat Wukong is by avoiding melee attacks, with dodge or player stance, while also immobilizing the target with the immobilized spell. Some of the bosses will always begin the battle with a jumping lunge attack, so dodging it can be a bit tricky, but if you press the dodge button just before he reaches you, then you should trigger a perfect dodge. While this is not essential, using a perfect dodge along with a counter attack can easily stagger the enemy, which will give you few valuable seconds to deal free damage. If you are unsure about your dodge timing in Black Meat Wukong, then you can simply move around the boss, and only attack when you see a clear opening. The best way to handle most fights is by using the various combos, unlocked through the staff stances talent tree. The most effective combo is the double light attack, followed by a short delay and then a heavy attack. This combo easily staggers most enemies, which gives you more opportunities to deal damage. And finally, I recommend to try to aim for most boss heads to maximize your damage. For example, the red long boss has containers, and these containers are especially vulnerable, because by breaking them with a varied combo, you can deal a lot of electrical damage to the boss, while also knocking him off of the balance. And this is what exactly you need to keep in mind. Every enemy, no matter how big or small, he has specific mechanics and weak spots. So by discovering them and exploiting, you will dramatically lower the difficulty of the fight. And that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or suggestions, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell, so this way you could support the channel and not miss any more amazing content. With that said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one, so take it easy. Peace.